Hey everyone, it's Aaron. Welcome back to Sheep Wash Chronicles. And today we have several packs from the late 80s, early 90s. Getting back to what this channel is all about, which is opening up that uh, that junk wax stuff and examining those cards that we just love to hate. All these packs came to us from Triple B Sports Cards in St. Paul, Minnesota, located in the historic West 7th area neighborhood, uh, right down the street from the Spot Bar, which I believe is the oldest continuously functioning bar in the state of Minnesota. You'll notice that they have the, the Pig's Eye beer logo, which I believe Pig's Eye hasn't been made in somewhere around 15, 20 years, but that's the way it goes. You gotta love West 7th. Let's take a look at what we got here today. So again, all these packs did come from uh, fresh boxes there. So we have 1987 tops, 2000, or rather 2000, 1992 upper date, 1989 tops, 1991 Fleer, 1993 Donruss, 1993 Leaf, and 1991 Score. So we'll have some fun ripping those open. And I think what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna start with 1987 tops. So let's get these set aside here. And I wonder, I think this one might have been opened already, but we'll take a look at it. There's your vintage gum. Anyone want some gum? That's the good stuff right there. All right. Spring Fever Baseball. I believe that is for Spring Training 88, so I don't think we're going to be winning that. Dale Murphy to start the pack off. That's not a bad card, Johnny Grubb. Uh, Janie Coconutter, Mark Gooby's on. He was actually pretty good for a little bit. Hall of Famer Tim Raines, Wade Roden, Kevin, ba Kevin Bass, Gina Petrali, Joe Price, uh, Juan Samuel, Larry Parrish, Chuck Tanner, Manager Card, Dante Moore, Bo Diaz, Jim Beatty, Lonnie Smith, and Franklin Stubbs. So that was a little bit of a bust on that one. Uh, but these are basically the quintessential 87 or the quintessential 80s cards. If somebody says 1980s cards to me, these are the ones I picture. The, that wood grain, uh, the Menards font, the whole bit. Uh, this set was notable for having, I believe, the Barry Bonds rookie. There's a Bo Jackson rookie in here. Um, I believe there's also on the second tier people, there's a Ruben Sierra rookie in there. And there might even be a Greg Maddox. I know in 87 Donruss there's a Maddox, but I'm not sure if in Tops there is. All right. Well, let's actually go with a foil pack here with 93 Leaf. Let's see what we have here. And this is the first year that Leaf had the, uh, the foil stamping. Moving into a premium product, or further into a premium product, rather, uh, than they were in the uh, sets launched in the early 90s. And these are a little tougher to read, but uh, Jody Reed, Danny Jackson, Jimmy Key, there's a Greg Maddox, as his first appearance as a Brave, uh, Damian Easley, Eric Karros, and... Tim Belcher, Ellis Burks, Ken Camnitti, Greg Hibbard, Randy Myers, who played for forever. And these cards are a little bricked, but not too bad. Uh, Felix Jose, Julio Valera, and Cal Ripken Jr. to finish that pack off. That was a that's a really good, sharp-looking card. I really like the Donruss stuff that has the uh, the action logo, or the action shots on those. That's a really good, really good photo. And so what you have is you have that foil stamping of the name. You have the leaf medallion there. But the other uh, redeeming, uh, or the, rather the other uh, uh, unique quality of this set is on the back, you have a rainbow foil stamp of the team logo in every corner. So that's a sharp looking card. And this sort of uh, goes into what you're going to see in the studio from the same year. And I will uh, put up the card here so you can see what that video looked like when we open up the uh, open up the uh, 93 Studios because those were sharp looking cards. We'll move on to 91 Fleer next and this is uh, widely seen as probably one of the worst set designs to come out of the uh, um, 
the the junk era, but I don't know. I've, I've actually kind of grown to like these ones. And this is the first uh, FLIR we've opened up on this channel. And here is appearance of their team logo stickers. And this was their uh, this was their promo. So you obviously had Donners with the puzzle pieces, and you had Tops with the quintessential uh, gum. And these stickers or what FLIR did. And they didn't vary a whole lot year to year. They either had these small four do a card insignias or they had a full uh they had a full sticker uh for some of the eighties. And then they did list uh some of the uh, stats in the back for the, the previous year. So there's your uh, uh team leaders for uh all the the key stats for the Phillies in nineteen ninety, which I don't think they were a good team in ninety, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> these bright yellow cards. This is something you usually see from Classic, but uh, Fleer did it this year. Chuck Malone, Juan Agosto, Kevin Gross, Chris Hoyles, Brian Harper as a twin, Bobby Bonilla, Mike Huff, Mookie Wilson, Tim Leary, Randy Myers, Paul Gibson, Andres Galarraga, Eric Hansen, and a decent-looking Carney Lansford with not a whole lot of wax stains. To finish that one off. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the yellow. I mean, like I said, this is one of those sets that uh, it has a lot of detractors in the hobby, but the yellow has kind of grown on me. I've never been a fan of the FLIR, the way they've done the uh, sort of alternating colors for the stats, especially the way they're not like really even. So I, I, that's just one of those things. I'm kind of a stickler about that type of thing. But uh, those aren't too bad cards. All right, let's move on to 92 Upper Deck. So all these packs themselves, I feel like the uh, the, the junk era stuff has shot way up in price. Um, I was able to get both of these for about a buck to a buck fifty a pack, but they just uh, they're getting really expensive now. Uh, you know, with good reason, people are getting back into the hobby, and it's definitely nice to see. So, Nolan Ryan to start that pack off, that's always a nice uh, face to see. That's a great shot at him, and I believe that he only had a couple more years left on cards. I think 94 tops is the last of his. Uh, he had Mark Davis, Joe Gray, uh, Mike Jackson, again, another guy who just played forever, and I think he actually pitched for the Twins in 2003, maybe. Terry Steinbach, uh, Thomas Howard, Daryl Kyle, a kind of a goofy shot. Unfortunately, he did pass away too. Uh, in case of the Canadian, uh, Jeff Bagwell, and that is not his rookie. I think his rookie was in '91, uh, but that's still a good card to have. Uh, Mark Lewis, Terry Mulholland, another just. Old, old guy, and again, he played for the Twins, too. Wade Boggs and Ryan Klesko, rookie. Sed Landrum and Ryan Sandberg. So a few a few good Hall of Famers in there, or should be Hall of Famers. This does appear to be a low series. I didn't take a look, but yeah, it looks like, yeah, it's all low numbers. And I believe that 92, I want to say it was Ted Williams. For baseball heroes. Yep, there you go, Ted Williams. All right, let's try score next. Uh, these ones are a little bit odd too. Um, and score always did these uh, plastic packs. So tough for getting into the wax. Not as uh, tough as the foil. Definitely less elegant. And those cards curl up quite a bit. And then we'll see the uh, the score promo, which is, should be a lenticular uh, sport flick style uh, quiz card. Jerome Walton, the card that everybody chased back in 1991. Jack McDowell, Terry Mulholland again, Andy Hawkins, who pitched a no-hitter that in 1990. Anthony Telford, Rafael Navoa, Chuck McElroy, Carl Everett, rookie card. Eddie Murray, Kurt Stillwell, Randy Johnson... Dan Plezak, Greg Cattery, Rob Murphy, Ken Kennedy again, and then Matt Williams. So again, another good batch of uh, of uh, mid-90s stars. 
And then there is your lenticular. So this is a World Series trivia. So we'll let the 93 or 1930 World Series. And, uh, oh, it's actually a little bit of a blurb versus a trivia. A lot of times they come with multiple choice, and then you have to use the lenticulars to get the answers. So this is another one of those sets that is sort of polarizing. Um, I like the use of the typeface. I've never been a fan of score the way they uh, vary the uh, colors of the set throughout the series, and especially these black ones are so hard to find in a good condition. Even this one, you know, it's packed fresh. But you can see there's a ding on the bottom there, and you already got some chipping on some of those on top. And the other thing is that, I mean, it, it just, I, I, I personally, I think it sort of gives it just a little bit of a cheap looking feel. But again, that's me, and that's purely opinion. One nice thing the score did is they did uh, make a commitment to doing uh, a lot of stats and actually doing pretty good blurbs uh, about the players and different info. And that's something that a lot of the sets weren't doing at this time. Um, one big, big, big detraction from this set is that it was a huge set. I believe this card set was 900-some cards. It was a bear to put together. And those cards are not worth much. So... All right, so we're going to go with, let's see, we got two more. I think we'll go with 93 Donruss here. And I did open a box live on this channel of Series 2. And unfortunately, the audio was terrible on that, so I ended up having to hide that video. But if there's enough requests for it, I'll go ahead and throw it back up so you can at least see the cards. We did have some decent cards come out of it. And again, I'm not sure what rookies came out of this set either, but all right, so let's take a look here. Dave Haas, Ozzy Canseco, and he is not the buff one. Bill <clears throat> huh. Sampin, Rich Rodriguez, Archie Kinar, I never got this guy's name correct. Never, ever, ever. Kinafoco, Pet Henkin, Bill Picota who now has a stat named after him. Ben McNoddle, Reggie Jefferson, Andy Bennis, Raphael Bocail, and John Smoltz, and Kurt Schilling. So a couple of decent cards in that pack uh, to finish that pack off. That pack was kind of a dud, too. Uh, I always really liked the set when I was little. When I was little. When I was a teenager, I suppose. I thought it was a really clean look. I thought the uh, uh, the bezels uh, for the logo and the player were extremely uh, futuristic looking. Actually, you know, I'm, I guess I'm dumb that way. Um, but I just I, I really liked the look of the set. I thought it looked really clean. I thought it looked really you know professional. I just really liked the way it looked. And I finally did complete the set, and it actually looks really good in a binder, too. And the nice thing is, I mean, they have good shots in the back, too. And there are some, I think I showed off the pocket in the last video that I did about 93 Donruss, but they have uh, some cards that actually have pretty good candid shots in the back. Looks like all these are action shots, but it was a good opportunity to get a, a good second uh, second photo. And this is back in the day where obviously you couldn't look up photos on the internet because the internet didn't exist yet. Thanks a lot, Al Gore. We're going to do our last pack here, 89 Tops. And this is the uh, this is not one of those ones I think of whenever I think of Junk Era Wax. Always think 89 Tops. And I always think of Major League 2 when I think of these ones. There's more... Uh, more gum, so you guys are welcome to that. That's kind of that's 32 years old now. Spring Fever entry for 1989, and this uh, set did not have a a Griffey, but it did have a Randy Johnson in it. So Ozzy Virgil, Greg Gross, Tommy Herr, Johnny. Paredes, I thought it was Capadres for a second. Tom Glavin, Darren Dalton, Alfredo Griffin, Frank Tanana, Damone Berryhill with the uh, Topps Rookie Cup, Darren Miller, Brady Anderson, Don Zimmer Manager card, 
uh, A's team or um, Mariners team leaders a nice checklist. Gotta love those checklists. And Joe Hezketh. And these cards are also pretty simple, but I think this is I think this is one of the stronger '80s designs. I think they're probably '85 tops, and '89 tops are probably my favorites of the series. Um, I sort of feel like as far as card design, they're really lacking from what their '80s and, and early early '90s especially. But yeah, I think the '89 tops are actually a really good looking set. Uh, even without the use of logos, you have the nice little. It's uh, it almost has like a softball vibe to it. You have the uh, the team name with the little flag, and then you have that name. I think this is a really sharp looking cards. So that's a quick and dirty video. I hope you guys like what you see. Uh, if you have any comments or if you have any uh, specific insight to share about sets, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you're getting updates for when we post new videos. And I try to get one up every other week here on Thursdays and Fridays. And then uh, also make sure you hit that bell and get notifications. And uh, yeah, just otherwise uh, stay safe and stay well and support your local card shop. <laughs>